<laughs> hey, well, well, a long time ago. So I, yeah. I can't believe you're here in my face. <laughs> it's and your I town, to practically. You, I know. Yeah, likewise. I, I have been know. watching you from afar. You oh. are fighting for us. You're fighting oh, for thank Palestine, you. for yeah. the regular person, and just as a Palestinian American, I appreciate it. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> you know, this is this is how it usually works. <laughs> Tired, but you're just fighting so hard for everybody. Because we appreciate it. the more they fight us, the more we win. Yes. It's just so amazing this yes. moment that we're in right now. Absolutely. And I know that the more people hear you yeah. and your stances, the more they realize they're being fooled by the two party system. Yes. That most people resonate with the Green Party. Yeah, it's really true. People are being fooled and abused. It's like being in an abusive domestic relationship and continuing to make excuses for your abuser. That's where so many people are, and you know they just really need to wake up for their own benefit and for all of us. Well, I do. I'm so sorry. Thank you. Oh, well, that's all right. You I can know. catch it on film. I know. <laughs>
people are not going to stop. And people are also expressing that, that this is not, you know, just for the election. And I was asked that a lot by, you know, a lot, many Arab American organizations that were considering who among these progressives, because there are three progressive campaigns that have identical agendas, and they really wanted to know, you know, where are you going after this? And, you know, what's the party going to do? And their commitment, you know, we have new chapters that are being founded really uh, all over the country, um, and they're amazing, and they're young, and they are uh, far more, what can I say, you know, when you're younger, you're more of an activist than you are if you joined the party back in the 1980s. And we have a lot of people, you know, who have been long-term Greens, but there are a whole lot of new Greens coming on board now. And it's really um, revived the fight. There's also a lot of um, uh, interest among progressives to work together and to find ways to collaborate and work in solidarity so that we are not allowing ourselves to be divided and conquered. That too is very exciting. I should mention we're, we're, we're working closely with Shama Sawant and Workers Strike Back, which is also really exciting now because Shama is working with, you know, like the, um, the striking uh, workers at Boeing. And to be on the picket line and hear the workers just start railing against the genocide and supporting our campaign. You know, we've never been in this position where we've had labor. You know, it's, they're not speaking for the union, of course, but they're speaking for an element of labor, which is fighting angry. And that's a lot of labor these days. And uh, they are leaning green and leaning very much in opposition to the genocide. And that's where the power is actually to shut it down. Although that power is happening all over the place right now. And I should mention, it's not only France, it's Spain and Italy that are now uh, uh, adopting uh, weapons, by, weapons boycotts against Israel. So we're going to see things change here in a big way. So the Democrats are really worried because they have lost the Arab American and the Muslim American vote, and that makes the margin of difference in uh, many of the swing states. So instead of changing their policy to earn those votes, they would rather distract and simply like blame me for spoiling the election by offering a solution to stop the genocide. That spoiling the election is stopping the genocide. No, I don't think so. They could earn those votes back in you know, in a heartbeat if they just uh, implemented a weapons boycott right now. They don't want to do that. They would rather lose the election so that they can continue the genocide. Shame on them. So I'd say, yeah, you know, take a look at, <laughs> at the um, Breakfast Club comments or even Democracy Now! or we did a Newsweek uh, Q&A live. The comments are pretty much the same all over the place. People can't take it. And especially where we're being smeared or attacked. I mean, like Hill Rising did an interview with a, a couple of talking heads for the Democratic Party. I wasn't on it, but they were smearing me all over the place. And those comments are just off the charts. People are off the charts. I wasn't going to vote. But just because of this interview, I'm now going to go out and vote for Stein. So they're really pissing people off by their destruction of our democracy and just, you know, uh, destroying this election. It's hard to know what's going to happen on Election Day. And, you know, I think the bottom line is that we define the win. You know, as Malcolm X said, never let your enemy tell you how many of you there are. And we need to take a lesson from Malcolm X. We're in charge here. They're not in charge. Uh, we understand the many complexities uh, that make it impossible to predict actually what the result is going to be. But the win is by making the most uh, of the cards that were dealt and coming out with the highest number and the longer, you know, the best long term prospects for continuing to build. Because you're not, even if you could get into the White House and stop the genocide with a phone call. You still have to fight the empire. The fight will not be over no matter what. So this is a long-term battle. And it's just so uplifting to see how ready people are uh, to be involved for the long haul.
I mean, to me, it's amazing because this is my third race and they keep smearing me with the same stuff. It's like they can't come up with anything new. And it's like it's lost its charm. People won't listen to it. And they're very pissed off by it, in fact. So they are shooting themselves in the foot. They are, you know, a uh, an empire whose day is done. It is done. And it is, you know, kind of unraveling be before our eyes abroad uh, and here at home. And, you know, the Democratic Party should be and the Republican Party, both of these parties of war, Wall Street, APEC, um, you know, the weapons contractors, uh, fossil fuels, big pharma, they should all be removed from power as quickly as possible. And this election is an unprecedented opportunity to do that. Trump is a racist demagogue, um, you know, uh, abusive, xenophobe, you know, Islamophobe, uh, anti-Semite, you know, erratically on all those things. Mm -hmm. um, you know, he is um, your worst nightmare. But then we also have another worst nightmare actually going on right now. How do you get more fascistic than conducting genocide? How do you get more fascistic than cop cities, which are training with the IDF, which are bashing young people over the heads on campuses simply for st standing up and protesting the genocide and giving voice to the values of the American people and the values of the whole world? Um, you know, if you look at how we got to Trump, how we got to Trump had an awful lot to do with Democrats. People are not voting uh, for the candidate they want. They're mostly voting against the candidate they hate the most. A lot of people were driven to Trump by what the Democrats have done, in particular Wall Street bailouts and, uh, and NAFTA. And it was after the 2008 Wall Street bailouts that, that the whole electorate flipped in a very big way to Republicans. The point there is that Democrats do not solve the problem of rising uh, Republican extremism or right-wing extremism. They, flow, they throw more fuel on the fire of Republican extremism. So yes, Trump is a disaster, but so too are the Democrats who feed the disaster of Trump as well.